what can I teach my son? What can I teach my daughter? How to like be with emotions opposed to react to the emotions. If you're a parent out there watching, I just think one of the most important things is allowing your kid to feel heard and loved. Like sometimes at the end of the day, all they want to do is just like, listen, dad and mom, like I'm angry right now. I don't want to feel like you're always judging me. You're always telling me what to do. Like I understand like what I did was wrong. That's the first thing, understanding what I did was wrong. We can work about the punishments after. We can worry about everything after. Let me just sit with my emotions. Let me process it. Welcome to the King's Code Podcast. Welcome to the King's Code Podcast. My name is Raul Velasquez and I have a very special guest today. How are you doing? Alejandro Velasquez. Alejandro Velasquez, a.k.a. Kid Influence. Not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> You're not a kid no more? Not a kid you, no you, more. Ever since you turned 18, now you yeah, want to be Alejandro. 18, go by my name now. We have, we have so many clips of you uh, from uh, Kid Influence podcast. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have the team just put a couple of clips in here of the Kid, of the kid Influence, the intro of the Kid Influence. You want the nostalgia <laughs> so bad. Now I grew up uh, older now, 18. You're in college? College. Got goals. Good, man. And, and today we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about... We're going to talk about a little, a, a little different kind of content than we usually do, but just uh, it's like catch up podcast we're going to talk about the Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia we have Sean O'Malley uh fighting this Saturday and then we also have a, a clip that we want to share with you guys about Logic and his dad and we think that we can add some some value there what was the last time you you and I did a podcast together uh last time I did I went to college so it was about that's like right four, it was the 18 it was six months ago, five six months, months ago before you, tur you turn 18 on December yeah turn 18 you went to in college December. in September yep and I did I did a um a uh, piece of content about the, the lessons of, of what I share with you, the 10 lessons that I share with you when you turn 18. Yeah. But we did a podcast together before you went to college. So yeah. how, how was your college experience so far? It's good. It's been really good. Uh, I like it. It's showing me a lot of like the strengths and weaknesses that I have to work on and just like kind of no one's there for you in the real world. Like everybody just, hand, like I just get handed assignments and I got to do it. There's no like teacher looking out for me is just um, a lot of work. What would you I have say to... like the like the top three things that you learned from being on your own in the last six months of being in college? What were the First, top? Uh, habits, like creating your habits. Uh, second is you got to put in the work and uh, the outcomes will come out. Like I, I um, got like a 3.7 GPA, made the dean's list. Uh, and that was awesome. It was, I was so just straight of off of just putting in the work. Like there was no secret recipe and my friends were like, oh, how'd you do it? And it's literally... Went to class, did my homework and assignment. Like when I when I showed you the email from the dean, I didn't think anything of it because I just did the regular work. You know, I just put in the work. I did a letter of extra studying, went to the library, all that, but um, nothing ordinary. Just put in the work. But you got you got a strong foundation going I did. in there. I did, and then the last is discipline. Like honestly, that's probably the hardest thing. Just going to classes, being on top of your stuff because no one's gonna do it for you. Good, man. It's paying off, man. My training it's is paying, paying, off. paying off. Consistency, yes. discipline, and get shit done. Yep. That's, that's the motto. That's the motto. All right. So who do you got this this weekend on Cheeto and uh, O'Malley? <sighs> I would love to say Cheeto, but it's got to go to Sean O'Malley. I gotta, How can you I, not go I, for I gotta, Cheeto? I, Come on. You're I Ecuadorian. I would love to. I would love to, but I'm such a big MMA guy. I love the, the story behind it. I love how fighters just... Coming up, Sean O'Malley is a great superstar. I, I really do, I really do respect him, and I think that he put out from from the uh, who, who, Dana contenders. Who lost to? Remind me again who who beat Sean O'Malley? Okay, no, uh, but just, that's re not, just remind me. Just no, I, I forget. So you know, I get old. If, I'm gonna get older. Guys, if who did guys, he lost to? If you guys are are you new to UFC? Uh, he did already lose to, to Chito Vera. He to did Chita. lose to Chito right, Vera. So, you know, the, 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 the and, odds uh, are he did stacked up. Chito. Kicked his ass one time. He did it. Cheeto he is going to do it he, again. Second round, knockout. Nah. Second if round, anything, knockout. Listen, I'm Ecuadorian. I'm a proud Ecuadorian. My, both my parents are Ecuadorian. Love my country. Uh, I would love, 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 love to have an Ecuadorian UFC fighter as a champion. So you got to put in the, only, the energy. You I do. Put in I do. I just give, love give UFC. Give them the credit. No, Cheeto. Listen, if you listen to this, Cheeto, you are, you are at. You got to go there. Second round. I'm putting Listen, money behind Chito, you. if you're watching, I wish you the best of luck. I wish that you win. No, no. I hope you're that ready, you win. You're with the Irish, <laughs> Irish, Irish team. We're the Ecuadorian team. 
Uh, yeah, I, I really do think uh, it's just amazing to see that we have an Ecuadorian title shot. It's never been done before. So I'm rooting definitely for, for going to be an exciting night. It's going to be an amazing you, you night. You know why? But I think Cheeto's going to win because he has that pressure. Same thing with who was the fighter that we that we saw recently that had the pressure of like the whole the whole country behind it. Like we saw an MMA fight and it was like the whole country was behind him and uh, and it was just so powerful. But he he actually lost. What was it? Really? Is it happened. Um, it was in UK. Was it the UK? Was it? It wasn't Volk, right? Volk just lost. It was Volk. Volk. Volk just lost. Yeah, Volk. Volk lost. He uh, to support you. And uh, Ilya, to Ilya, and he got knocked out. It, it's it's sad. The Volk, seeing the Volk like hit, hit me. seeing hit me UFC, too. like he has. So just mind for you guys that if you don't watch UFC, this dude has not lost a fight. And and mind you, he's gone up ranks. He did lose uh, to Islam Makachev, but he hasn't lost in his division in six years since I think 2016, if I stand corrected. And that was just seeing him lose that belt. It really just that one. And then the other one was when we were in Mexico. Yeah, saw, Leon uh, Edwards. That was the most. <laughs> was, I, so listen, I was the biggest Leon Edwards. I still am. I still don't like him just because the love I had for Usman, for Usman. I loved him as a fighter, and I was like, you know what? Like no one's gonna take him. But that story for Leon to come back and and prove to everybody the last round, last minute, last seconds of the fight. You could probably show a clip here, but that was an amazing, amazing fight. It just shows how it, all it takes is one kick. One kick. That's why I love the UFC, man, because all the it UFC takes. is like is between skills and and luck. Just you need a little bit of luck. You need a lot of skills, but just a little bit of luck. Yeah, you had that one boom. hand down, boom. And 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 what I always and like Leon Edwards for really uh, doing it again and, and going in there again, again and yeah. and you know showing why he's so dominant. And I love how uh, in USC 300, Dana White, uh, Dana White offered him um, a couple fights, and he accepted three fights. He didn't care. Dana said, I love him as a fighter. I push him more because I gave him three names. He accepted all three names. No, wow. no, yeah. I didn't he want didn't a pay raise. He didn't, he yep. didn't want anything. He just said, give me the player. fighters. It's a team player. He really is. Uh, player. I, I think that he's definitely going to be in the UFC for long. And, and the one that's sad is Izzy. Izzy went out. I know, yeah, man. Three he has so much potential, so man. So much potential. And lost his just, edge. Yeah. He lost his edge, man. We got to get him back on track. Yeah, I know. But Volk, that was a, a huge loss. Huge like, loss. Huge loss. He's going to take time, probably. Training camp. This, he, he needs you're going to feel this this weekend when Cheat beats. I, I would love an upset. <laughs> I think UFC. You're going to feel the same 2024 way. 2024 has been a year of upsets. So many people have their belts Chito, taking. Go in. I think Let's if, do it. if if Chito wins, uh, we're going to go back to Ecuador and I will celebrate in <laughs> Ecuador because first UFC so what, let's fighter. Do a bet ever. Here. If Chito wins, no, you pay for my ticket to no, go to Ecuador. No, I'm not doing that. You're paying for it. I'm not, I'm not I, I want to fly first class to Ecuador. I see now where. If I, but I know, listen, Chito, you push the brakes, you start going. Full, you just push your gas, you keep don't, going. Don't give Listen, him anything, man. I just think from the beginning, he has to go in. Just like he just, just like he did it before. Going, yeah, I think do now, what I you think did before. Five, it, it would be I think it'll be five rounds if, if Chito brings him to the final round, maybe by some like decision. Second round, second round knockout. I predict it. We'll see. Sean O'Malley is a uh combat sports genius. He knows what he's doing. He's I, sharp. I like Sean O'Malley because he's a he's a marketing genius. He's he's, he's he, yes. he makes more money off of the uh, fights and his brand deals. Yeah, than, Happy than Dad. Fighting. Happy Dad sponsors him. Happy Dad sponsors him. He has a bunch of sponsors. Bunch I mean, of he, sponsors. He what he's doing. In the, the marketing aspect, he's he's a good uh, marketer. And talk uh, about marketing, uh, Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. Have you seen the Ryan Garcia? What's going man, on? Man, I, I don't know, man. If he's a marketing genius. I don't know if it's he's everybody's talking about hard, him. But core that, midlife that's, crisis that's, at his age. Yeah, that's that's what everybody was talking about. If it's gonna be like a publicity stunt, is that he's going crazy? But you know, we have um, we have crazy ways of marketing stuff. You know, one of the craziest in, in UFC was like they talked about their family, and it was it was something that like they didn't appreciate. And and seeing now, like it doesn't matter what's going on. A lot of people are talking about it. It's getting it's getting the the ball rolling for him and. Whether he handled it or not, he said that he got back his social media. He's strictly going to be talking about fighting. He said... So let's, let's put a clip here. Here to announce my return back to Instagram. Now, over these past couple of days, you guys have seen some pretty intense things. I understand what they are and I understand what they look like. But I'm coming back to announce 
I'm not going to speak on any other topic other than boxing, sports, and my fight. That's the only thing I'm going to be talking about. And uh, I'm training for this fight. I want everybody to know this fight's still on. 420, five weeks of super focus. I have PBD helping me in this camp and many other warriors. So I thank you guys for the support. And I'll see you guys on 420. Uh, just so you could see like what we're talking see about. See what's going on. Because, yeah. you know, I think Ryan Garcia... Uh, I my personal opinion is that he's going through something. I think, I think he's it going is through definitely something because it's not he doesn't energetically he doesn't look like he's all there. He doesn't like the old Ryan was very sharp. He was very keen. I think that you know even if you have God in your life, you still go through stuff. You still go through you know challenges and you still go through a lot of mental issues as well. Like be, having the pressure of winning a fight and also like Devin Haney is no person to, like even take lightly he is going up in, in rankings you know he's going for the bell he wants a world title like this is he, he got to be mentally prepared for, and, and going into a fight you know one-on-one -on -one, it's something that takes a lot out of you at a person but but you know one of the things that i i see with ryan is that he believes in in, in jesus right he, he's a christian he he's has a, christian, a, a, yeah. a faith and belief so you have to believe that you know when i was getting close to the church i remember when i was in my 20s and i was going to get baptized Man, I had nightmares at night. I, I mm. had nightmares that I thought I was fighting the devil. Like, you know, I don't know if you ever had those nightmares that you know they're nightmares yeah. and not real, yeah. but they feel real. Yeah. For like a whole week before I got baptized, it's kind of like I was struggling between the devil and me. And I knew it was a fight in, with the devil. So I, tru I truly believe that there's some spiritual warfare going on. I think spiritual and, and warfare is, is a uh, very serious thing. In the of it. And, and, you know, the devil has many shapes and forms and sizes that can attack you mentally and just the platform that he has for himself. Like he has, he's such a big influence. He's such a big, you know, popular person on Instagram that he could post one thing and he could post another thing. And so many kids are looking up to him and, you know, like there's allegations of him. Uh, like he did say that he does drink. He does use, use of marijuana. There's allegations that he does cocaine, but it's just all this. Like you see the young People that want to be fighters or young influencers that are going up that are looking up to these, you know, fighters. Everybody loves entertainment. Everybody loves boxing. Yeah. And so so I, I don't think it's a marketing situation. I think it's, I he's think going it's through just, something. Maybe. I think he's going through something at the wrong time and he probably thought that it was going to be, you know, like, it's just it's just a lot. Like, the pressure. But you know really what? It's, it's who you have around you. 100%. Proximity is power. You know, so I, I was happy to hear that he's having PBD. You know, Patrick B. David yeah. is, is, is in his corner. Mm. Uh, and Pat, he's just very grounded. He's, he's a believer and he's very strategic. So I, I believe yeah. that he's going to be in the right track. So Hopefully. prayers, all prayers, prayers for Ryan. All prayers. Make sure that he um, he gets back on track because we like him as a, as a fighter. I think yeah, Love him. Yeah. he has he has all these skills, the charisma, the looks to go like 10 years into into this yeah to this game he actually he uh i after the javante davis because you had ryan garcia and going to the javante davis i know fight, i had right? him because he had that he had that song remember my one of my favorite oceans, songs oceans yeah. from hill song yeah i said when he came out i said man i'm putting money behind this guy man as and soon as i lost. saw as soon as i saw javante davis work out walk out so with you chief had Keef, Devonta davis as soon as he walked out with chief keith i knew it was raps i said Put all my money, put the house on Javante <laughs> Davis. Y'all don't know, he walked out with Chief Keef. He did a live performance with Chief Keef. And I was like, he is in his zone right now. Knocked him out, got the job done. And, and now Ryan's, he's, he's just lost as a fighter. It's looking like he's lost as a person. So hopefully he gets his ground lost back. Lost his edge, man. He has to get yeah. back his edge. So it's, it's funny how all these fighters we're talking about, like, because it's real. It happens to athletes, it happens to businessmen, it happens to 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 fathers, to, to anybody, any man could lose. Nothing is guaranteed. You could be on top of your game, but then something happens and you could be at the lowest of the low, right? Yeah. So it's all about perspective. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what I teach you is like, don't take for granted what you have right now. Always grateful. Like you always morning. have to be grateful. Like my mantra is shit could always be worse. Whenever always. things happen, shit could always be worse. You know, I remember just a, a couple months ago, we took you to the emergency room. Yep. Remember, share a little bit of a story of what happened. It's so dumb. I, I always, it's so funny because my sister always makes fun of me because I love to eat late night. Like, it's always like cravings. Like everybody loves to eat late night. And I begged my mom. I was like, let's just, let's just go get something. Let's just go get food. Like, go get food as a family. Go get me, you, I'll drive. I don't care. I just want to go get food. She was like, you know what? I'll make you a healthy snack. Acai bowl. 
sure, I'll take it. I'll take whatever. I'll, I'll eat whatever. And she made me acai bowl. And uh, two seconds in, I felt like my throat a little itchy. Then I was like, oh, I was like joking. I was like, I think I'm getting a allergic reaction. And then I ended up going to the hospital after. I ended up staying well, there you, for like you. You told me like that. Hours. I'm gonna take myself to the emergency room because I'm thinking I have an emergency reaction. Yeah, I thought it was in my head. Like I, it, sometimes you know it's in my head. Like I guess the best of me. But then I was like, I'll just drive myself. And then I was like, wow, it's really hitting to me. And the craziest thing is that I was up for 15 hours. I didn't want to go to. We sleep. were in the hospital. I was right there next to you. Yeah, I was right there next to you every like for 15 hours straight. I mean, and that's what I kept on saying to myself: shit could be worse. You know, things, Always. you know, just be perspective. It's just an allergic reaction. The scary part was when the EpiPen wasn't working. Yeah, right? I know. I got like three EpiPens, so much steroids, so much IVs. And I was like, for one allergic reaction. And what was the moment that you you felt like, oh, okay, uh, I, I need to start texting the people I love? Yeah, what? it was it was like when it was like four in the morning. And, and no, this is where this is the craziest part. I woke up, the doctor woke me up. She was like, listen, like there's a possibility that we go into surgery. I was like, oh, God, help me now, because I've never had surgery in my life. That's probably the scariest thing. And I thought it was a dream. I thought I was dreaming. I was like, there's no way this doctor just told me I need to go to surgery. And then I was like, wow, like this. And 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 that's when I had like most grateful part that I'm like, listen, at least I'm alive. At least I can breathe somewhat. At least that I'm here. I have my family next to me because some people deal with this alone, you know, and like it yeah, gets them yeah. into like the I have nobody. It doesn't matter anymore. But I had like a whole family supporting me, which. Like, all friends texting me, you know, like it's just really supportive. And that's when you have to really put it all, all on God. Yeah. Like that's when you have to ask God for, for strength, for wisdom, and most important, for, for you to surrender. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Yeah, I know. I even texted one of my friends, uh, Matthew Iglesias. I texted him just saying, like, send me some um, Bible verses about healing. He sent me some songs, some Bible verses. And, like, at that moment, I was willing to do anything, like, just... Pray out to God and on, it's like, always good to have like prayer warriors around you. Yeah, always. Like my mom, like my Pili. She's yeah. like a prayer. Like every time something happens, every time takes my Pili from yeah. prayers. I know you were traveling with just recently too. Another thing happened. Yeah. You were coming back from from where? From the from uh, Buffalo. You went from to the Drake, concert. the Drake concert. Yeah. You coming back? You were in the plane. I was supposed to pick you up. That was the and worst. What that was so we had like turbulence and we couldn't land the plane three times we tried to land it three times it was winds snow everything that's when like i knew something was going wrong and i knew that i had to like trust god and give him like whole faith i was like listen whatever happens like i trust you with all my heart you were texting me lad i love you I'm like where are you <laughs> like i'm waiting for you i'm 45 minutes outside you know airport. what's wrong when abby texted you i text you and i, I don't get scared for stuff like that like, I'm, i have to be like the strong one but then i was like yeah and, and I was so proud of, like, mom, what mom said is, like, you know, your son, he was a stud. He was, like, cool, like, collected. You had certainty. I know inside you probably were, like, Yeah, I know. I had breaks. to be there. I had to be there for my family and, like, step up for them. But it you was. Hold the space for the feminine energy. Because if you freak out, if you start acting exactly, nervous. Exactly. What was happening? You said somebody behind you? Yeah, somebody you? behind me is the dude had, like, the actual, like, prescribed anxiety for flying. And he was freaking oh, was, out. And, like. It was he was freaking like that's how you freaking. I thought I had two people. I have Abby right here, my mom right here, the dude behind me. So you're managing the entire the, the entire, entire situation. Plane. And then there's a there was a pilot behind us. Like he's like, it's okay, guys. I'm actually a licensed pilot. If some if he was like, if the pilot can't land it, I will try to land it. I'm like, oh God, like we're, we're gonna be here forever. So it sounds to me like God is putting you in situations like this to give you you know more strength. Yeah, to help and, you, and help one you of the up. one of the things that. Uh, I always think about that. I'm pretty sure it was a Bible verse. It said um, how God only puts the biggest difficulties in your life to the people that can handle it the most. He will never give you more to handle. Never. Never give you more to handle. So you just, if you want to level up, you, you got to get stronger. Yeah. That's Have it. faith in. So before we go into this one, there was one more topic I wanted to talk to you about. Is what do you think about this Jake Paul and uh, Tyson fight? Yeah, that's a crazy fight. I think that... Uh, Jake Paul is really smart in his marketing. I think that he's very, uh, like, he knows what he's doing. I think, like, having fighters like Mike Tyson, it just attracts. And it's only on Netflix. It's an amazing opportunity it's, that you get. It's, just it's, to it's stand. interesting to see how Netflix is coming into the, the, the boxing sports scene, yeah. uh, entertainment business. It is. But I don't think there's an upside, except for money. Obviously, money is a, a huge upside for both of them. But Jake, what's the upside for Jake Paul? If Jake Paul gets knocked out, he gets, he gets knocked, knocked out by Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. But if he knocks Mike Tyson out, he knocks he, out Mike like, Tyson. So the, the 
there's, I think, all downside of of um, characteristics of a mm. of, of a fighter is yeah. the downside for I, Jake Paul. I just think he, he looks like an asshole for beating up an older guy. Yeah, uh, he looks like uh, he doesn't have his shit together. He gets beat up by Mike Tyson, even though Mike Tyson is Mike Tyson. But yeah, no I think that uh, many people like just don't res- like don't like that he doesn't respect the game. I yeah. think that. He tries to cheat it. He doesn't want to fight people his age. He just cheats the game, and it makes the boxing entertainment business like it just ruins but, it. But the it, upside, the, I think, the upside is in the boxing industry because he's bringing is. so much attention he is to the bringing, boxing industry. He is bringing, because, and, like, but I just don't appreciate that he calls people out like Canelo. He calls people out like uh, who else? Tank. He calls people out like Triple G. Like people like that. Like it, it's. It's honestly like comedian at this point because it's like no one's it's giving like you that WWF, fight. Like, you know, it's yeah. kind of like now. And then like Logan's in WWF now. Like it's just a whole like. But it, you know, it's entertainment. All, they've, listen, it's entertainment. They've all I'll, been I'll about money. It. I'm gonna watch it. I'm yeah. sure millions are gonna watch that, it through Netflix. And Netflix true. is gonna get listen, more popular one because thing, of this. One thing I could always say is they're always about their money. They always see a way how to get their money. Can, and they're can smart. Hit the I'm not gonna knock. I'm not gonna knock the player. So I, I think that um again I'm rooting for Mike Tyson. So I'm, I'm an all head. I want Mike Tyson. Uh Cheeto is gonna is, is is gonna win this weekend. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully. So so now we have this clip that we wanna we react to. Like we, you and I we we were talking about how Logic, Logic is a rapper. Why don't you give give him a little insight of who Yeah, Logic, Logic is. a rapper. Uh he got popular off of his very popular suicide uh song that he made back in the day. I think it was Either it was a suicide number, 2016 right? or 2018. It was the, is, is the number for the suicide hotline. Yeah, one one eight hundred suicide hotline. So he made a song about it, and then he blew up because yeah, he it started was talking about like the very depression. powerful. It was a very powerful video about how a kid was. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a guy that liked the guy, and he was just going through a lot of depression. In the video, it depicts. Like his journey in high school, how he uh, was bullied, how his parents found out, and it was just like a whole disaster. And he's half white, half black, right? Yes, he's biracial. And he, and he grew up with uh, with his mom, and his father wasn't around because his father was a drug addict. Yeah, his father was a drug addict. He uh, he used that as kind of like his fuel. Like I'm I'm gonna you know get make make something out of me, even though my dad's not there. He would hang around. That's why he kind of says, like, in, in the clip, you'll probably see, like, he says the black community, he was always raised by, you know, his his black family members. So he was always in that hip-hop range. He always, he did shows. He did, uh, like, just underground scene. He did anything he could to just blow up. And But that song really did help him, the 1-800-Suicide Hotline. And it just became ma- mainstream. I'm pretty sure, like, the Marshmallow did a remix and, like, a yeah, whole he blew thing. Up. He, he it blew up. up. It was I mean, mainstream. We, you you mainstream. and I and Abby, we took up to his concert. Yeah, uh, that was the second concert I've ever been to. First was Drake. Best concert I ever went to in my life. If you guys ever had the opportunity, go to Drake concert. Amazing. And uh, you've so been, you been to three Drake concerts. Three I took Drake, you to concerts. Drake concert where you were ten years old. That was the best. Scorpion was, off off the Scorpion. The best, we the saw best. Travis. Travis was there. MSG front row. Uh, floor seats. I couldn't get any better. I was the, I was little, so you were little, I couldn't. But you had all uh, the girls in there, so I had to protect you from all yeah, the girls that are going crazy. I was little. I was little, but like, it was. I saw it. I experienced yeah. that. Pictures. So I loved it. And then we went to the other one. Um, was it Madison Square Garden too? It was Madison Square Garden yeah. as well, and that was cool. It was a Twenty One Savage, and then me and my sister just went to the Twenty One. I mean, no, sorry, Drake and J Cole concert. That, oh, was, that must have been awesome. That was crazy. <laughs> Loved it. J. Cole, Jermaine is just... I'm waiting for the Jay-Z and Kanye. Never coming out ever back. again. The, uh, never coming back again. The Watch the Throne too. I'm waiting Never for coming back. You know, I went to that... The, yeah, the, I know. I went to the Watch the Throne concert. That, that was is the probably the best concert. concerts Kanye ever. and Jay-Z. Never happening. It. Never happening again. And that, back, back then, they didn't have an iPhone. So I had uh, one of those uh, cameras. Camcorders? Uh, camcorders. camcorders. <laughs> and I have a bunch... I have to find the footage. Because I have a bunch of videos. That'd be nice, that. though. You find it. I gotta find the footage. But that's and then now we're trying to go to the Aventura concert, but that, I don't know if that's gonna happen. Oh God! Aventura's worse than Drake. Aventura's worse than Drake. We got the Spanish community. How many TikToks I've seen? It was so funny. I saw this girl on TikTok. Uh, she was a doctor, and both of her friends were getting the tickets, and they told their patients that they were having trouble with the Wi-Fi, and the entire time they were getting tickets, and they got the <laughs> tickets, and they went crazy. Like, Spanish community. 
It's crazy. Bad yeah. Bunny. They, like, love, they love Aventura. So let's let's get into let's get into this clip. Uh, Elvis, you could play that clip. Uh, this is a podcast that he's interviewing his his father, and he's he's talking to him about you know where he where he was, and I think the main question that he's asking right now is like how did it, how did it felt when he wasn't there for him. I'm not angry. We're just talking about it. You know, there's weekends as a little boy. I remember packing. Uh, I didn't get emotional, and I won't. But I remember. I might. I might. <laughs> I, but I remember. I remember packing my uh, my backpack. And yeah, well, you were little. You weren't that little. How old were you? No, I was little, nigga. How old? Seven, eight years old. And I packed my my bag, and it's cool. I don't know. I don't know if a tear's gonna come, but if it does, I won't. I won't shy it away. I pack a. I pack a backpack, and because my mom tells me that, uh, you know, my dad is gonna come pick me up because he promised that he would come pick me up. And it's all good, I'm not trying to milk it, I can fuck about it for you. I'm just dealing with my emotions as they come right now. And uh, my mom says that my dad is gonna come and pick me up, and he doesn't pick me up, and I wait all day outside. Mm. And I wait, and I wait, mm. and you don't come. And it's not the first time, and I want you to let me finish, because I want you to hear it. You know, because there's a part of me that has grown as I am and uh, and uh, developed as I feel mentally, there's still that little boy that, um, and it's all good. That I'm misses gonna, that, that, that. No, that. it ain't that. Let me finish. Okay. Man, like seven, eight years old. You know, the psychologists talk about it. That's the beginning where the where the, the boy the begins to start creating a. Um, a meaning of the world, right? What the, what, what does it all mean? That perception, right? So, at, at seven, eight years old, man, I think that that has to be a tra one a traumatic experience. Your dad is, is gonna pick you up. He doesn't he doesn't pick you up, and uh, you know, uh, for me, going back, I mean, that's the time that my my parents came to Ecuador when I was mm. eight years old. So I could, when I saw this, man, it, it hit me. Yeah. Because like that's like me. I imagine my my mom and dad going to the plane and leaving. You know, to the United States coming from Ecuador, so I could see how like this pain that he has right now mm. is being unresolved issues 100%, for, for all decades. Those years, because that's yeah. when I started going through my my tunnel. I had to resolve those issues as a little boy, or mm. feeling abandoned, or feeling like my parents left me. What What are you? What's your insight for you from this? I think it's so critical that a dad is there for their son and just there like emotionally physically and just to see this is like heartbreaking just because i understand how you know i've never had somebody like you that that left me or or that made me feel abandoned you were always there you there was times that i would question like oh he's working so much but there would never be a point that I would be like you know i've never felt this you know i've never felt like my dad abandoning me never felt like not loved enough so it's just heartbreaking to see like the harsh reality that you know, some sons have to go through. One of the things that we, uh, you know, your mom and I, we did is every single day I come home and I was exhausted and I was tired. And you and, you, and your sister would come around and I wanted to play. Yeah. I give you an hour of power. I call yeah. it an hour of power. I just like every, like the last energy that I had. But in that one hour, it was just all in. Remember, we would, yeah. we would dance, we dance. would fight, we would, we would play music, whatever it is. And you guys would feel exhausted. The whole plan was getting you guys exhausted. So you go to sleep. Sleep at 8 o'clock. And then mom yeah. and I would have some time together. But we were just done by that time. But that, yeah. that was that, but we started doing that with the hour of power. So you guys would never feel like, mm. oh, you know, my dad is too tired. Yeah. Or he's working too much. He doesn't care about me. Uh, keep going, Ellis. Thank you. The little boy that's still waiting on the curb. for his dad mm -hmm. and it's all good once again you know i'm not here and i want you to let me finish daddy i don't want you to talk i want you to hear me because i want to be heard um, it's funny i'm just thinking about how much we finna be laughing in like five minutes <laughs> um sorry just give, I feel me, just give me a second don't talk i mean just give me a second i want you to hear me dad I'm a master manipulator. I'm a, I'm the king's con, con man, and I got it from you. So I want you to listen as I tell you, because I'm not here to try to con you, 
and I don't think you're going to try to con me by any means, but I know you've gotten yourself out of some slippery fucking situations by talking. And the last thing I want you to do right now with the utmost love and respect, daddy, is I want you to listen to me. It's sometimes the hardest thing for a man to do is when you see somebody that you love vulnerable, vulnerable, like we automatically, the masculine energy wants to fix shit. Exactly. Let it's me fix like, it. Let me, let me fix talk it. about it. Let exactly. me, like, you experience this with your sister, right? Yeah. Whenever she gets emotional, you want to fix things, right? 100%. I was just like, how, how can I get there? How can I fix this problem? How can we just resolve it, move past it, all of that? But sometimes it's not, it's, it's not the answer. It's healing. It's, it's like being vulnerable enough to be like, listen, like I'm not okay. And I probably won't be okay for a little bit, but we're going to need to work through it. So, so part of what I, uh, I talk to, to, to my guys, what I teach is holding the space. Yeah. What, what he's asking is like, just hold the space for me. Can you just be present for me so I could go through these emotions without you speaking to trying to fix it or, or try, to, try to frame it in a different way, or try to mm -hmm. spin it in a different way. You know, mm -hmm. so when, when you have people like that, you have to just let them be like the, the best thing is to be present, 100% present and be there so they could feel that you're paying attention. So they could feel that you're, you're being empathetic, mm. you know, without trying to uh, when, when uh, mom, for example, gets mad. Right. And I used to just try to touch her, try to hug her. It's, it's worse. Just yeah. hold the space of, of allowing them to to express their feelings and emotions. Just like you said, I want to be heard because people want to be, oh, they, they be heard. They want to be heard. Uh, process those emotions. Uh, I waited for you. Mm. And, uh, damn, it's so deep. It's deep. Just give me a second, all right? I got That's you. a lot, nigga. We never talked about I this. got you. Now, I waited, and I didn't wait a weekend. I waited every weekend. I waited every weekend that ever, I ever had. Sorry. Give me a second. Don't interrupt me. I know you. <laughs> just let me just be for a second, please. I'm not trying to make this some shit, some bullshit. I waited every weekend and you never showed up. And you always told you always said that you would. <laughs> and I love looking back. Man, that, that's just deep, man. It's just deep pain. And I don't think that he is like, putting up a show for the cameras. Like a lot of people are, are saying no. that, you know, it was he's trying to use his father. I think that he used the opportunity for, for healing, like, yeah, to have 100%. the conversation. You know, and, and in the programs that, that we have, like we actually have this type of deep conversations about the traumas and just that, healing uh, your trauma. that men go through. You know? Yeah, and, and it's the hardest thing for men, like, sometimes to just be vulnerable because you just want to be like, you know what, it's fine, it's going to be fine, but if you don't heal from the inside out, then you're never going to really truly heal. What, what process do you use? Like, you know, you, you've you been around me for uh, 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 all your life. <laughs> you know, you've been around me for all your life. What's the process that you use? What have you learned, if anything, of of how to create that emotional feelings? Because I have a, I have a couple of clients that, that they have teenagers and they always ask me, you know, Raul, what, what can I teach my son? What can I teach my daughter? How to like be with emotions as opposed to react to the emotions? I know that, you know, you're just Think, starting yeah. out, but what have you learned no, to 100%. kind of process your emotions? The, the most important thing is remembering that your parents are doing things that they love you. And it's, it's kind of hard going through it and saying it. But I think as you grow and as you mature, and like for me, the biggest blessing that I've ever had was my sister, because now I realize like, you know what, like looking back at it, yeah. mom and dad have the best intentions. They're doing it out of love. But if you're a parent out there watching, I just think one of the most important things is allowing your kid to feel heard and loved. Like sometimes at the end of the day, all they want to do is just like, listen, dad and mom, like I'm angry right now. Like I'm mad. I'm going to be mad. Like, I just feel hurt, I, I, all these emotions that are happening, and you just let them sit with it. But if sometimes they don't want to argue, like, sometimes I just want you to hear me. I don't want to argue right now. We can solve it. That's, but, like, right now I'm such an emotional, vulnerable state. I just want to feel like you're my dad right now. I don't want to feel like you're always judging me. You're always telling me what to do. Like, I understand what, what I did was wrong. That's the first thing, understanding what I did was wrong. We could work about the punishments after. We could worry about everything after. Let me just sit with my emotions. Let me process it. And after, I think it's, it's gratitude. One of the best things that I've ever learned for me was, like, grateful to live another day. I feel like we underestimate the power 
of waking up another day, of waking up to another breath. That I think one of the most important things mom's ever told me is like, you woke up today without having to press a button to start your blood, to start your heart. Mm. You woke up and you got gifted from God that breath of a new day and, and just take it as a blessing, take it as a gift. And I think a lot of the, the young kids now, they take for granted that gratitude. Take for granted, they, 100%. They feel entitled, right? And also parents feel entitled. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm providing for you everything. I'm giving you everything. You should love me. You should exactly. want to spend time with me. You should want to do the things that I want. 100%. So I think from both sides, it's entitled. Both sides, just the arrogance and just like the... the the fixed mindset of like you have to do this for me like like the worst thing you could tell them is like okay like because i said so because i did this makes you not want to do it and it's just holding the space for them being there emotionally that's the biggest thing it will help them after they will see it they will they'll appreciate it after but in that moment you just need to be just be like all right let me put my like ego my pride aside and let me just help my kid right now yeah all right let's finish up this um clip because now he's now you see that he's really feeling that that pain. That pain, like He yeah, really the wants trauma. to like get it out and and get out the trauma. So I want to see how. I waited and I look at my son and I think about how much I, I, what my what my son means to me and I can never make him sit on a curb. And I don't say this to make you feel bad. I I don't. I really love you. This is not the beat you up show. This is the here we are. This is the we're gonna rejoice. So let me get it out. Because you like me, we're the same. I know you love to talk, and I love to talk. <laughs> and I've been talking and talking, so, but let me That's keep so talking. Funny, and let me just say, I was that little boy, and you told me you would come, and you promised, and you promised. You know, I'm a man of my word today because you aren't. And you promised me. And I remember the... I remember the sidewalk that I would sit on every time you said you would come see me and you never came to see me. And I remember uh, my mom telling me not to bother. And I did. I bothered every time because I love you. And I love you. And I just, uh, I just wanted you to know that it really hurt. And so... We won't stay on this too long, but I just want to ask, what is it like to have used, sorry, this ain't even me crying. This is me as a child who never got the opportunity to cry. Mm -hmm. What is it like as a man who used the substance and what was it like using a substance? that would allow you to make that little boy wait forever? What was it like to use it? You know, that, I think that's the punchline because everybody's looking for, like, why? Yeah. Like, why? Why? And, and we, we want to go into the whole video, but, you know, his dad responds like if, if it was like hell. It feels like hell because I feel like I was in prison because he was on drugs. Yeah. So that was the hell that he was going through. But, but one of the things that I want to highlight in this, he says, I am a man of my word because you weren't. Exactly. I was just about to say the same thing. And, I, and, and as I'm hearing that, one thing for me is how he said, I'm the man that I am today because that you weren't. I think for me, it could go the opposite way because I'm the way that I am because of you. Like the work ethic that I have, why I perform so well in school is because you showed me the opportunity that I gave, I will never take for granted. The way that you gave me all this opportunity, I won't take for granted. So I feel like the logic, and even though he's doing right now financially well, doing amazing in, in his career, like doing a podcast and all that, not so much music now, but um, he took the opportunity. And I think that his dad showed him like the negative side. Mm -hmm. Like, I am here where I am because you weren't there for me. But for me, I kind of feel like the opposite. Like, I'm here where I am in my life at 18 years old, like, being, you know, so knowledgeable in so many areas because of you. And, like, I, I always appreciate the opportunity you gave me. Thank you. Yeah, you don't make me cry now. You don't make me cry. <laughs> cut, cut this off to commercials. <laughs> no, I appreciate, I appreciate that because, you know, when, when, I, when I hear that is the biggest fear that every man has that has kids is like, 
are we gonna let? Are we gonna be good enough fathers? Yeah. Because we, we, you never know if you're gonna be a good father or not until, of course, you know, no, turn 18, 19, 20. Like, oh, okay, it worked. Exactly. You know, so at yeah. the beginning, we were trying to figure things out with you, mom and I. We're trying to yeah. figure things out. I we was the this, first one too. So. You're, the, you're the first child. We're trying to figure things out and maybe make some mistakes. You, you know, you fell off the crib a couple of times. Okay. <laughs> so now with your sister, we learn. But uh, it, it is true how like we are every single generation is trying to improve, yeah. become better fathers. So I, what I take away from this video is just healing. Like you need to heal the the child, so the man could rise. Mm -hmm. So you have some some stuff that eventually you're gonna find out as you get older. Like some yeah. traumas you have to heal. So that's gonna be a process 100%. for you to heal those things, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. The second is that you have to also end generational curses. So not blaming your father by using, like he said, I'm, I am a man who I am today because you weren't, you were. right? In your case, like you're learning from me. How can you improve so you could be better for your for exactly. your son or daughters? Exactly. Uh, and the third is just the vulnerability. You gotta be able to have the real and raw conversations with with men around you to heal that, mm. with fathers, with grandfathers, with with cousins, with uncles. Like that's what brings the bond together to have this type of conversations. Couldn't have said it better. What What would you take away? I think just the most important thing is being there for your you know, your son or daughter, knowing that they are loved by you, your intentions that you have, and just showing that this really shows that what you do and what you say affects your child. Like, you, somebody is always watching you at the end of the day, whether you know it or not. I, I would say either somebody's reason to do something or somebody's excuse, but exactly. you can't be both. So thank you, my boy, for being here. Thank Alejandro you. Velasquez. Guys, make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you Thank follow you him. Make sure that you continue to like and subscribe. send us your, your questions. Until next time, learn it, live it, experience it. Love, Love life. life.